Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I am an independent contractor and trainer. In this episode I am going to talk about Standard Optional, which has been added in C++17. Now I will say I haven't brought this up yet even though I claim to have covered most of C++17 I think up to this point. Partially because I don't really like Optional. I think it has the tendency to be abused, but I've spent a little bit more time with its description and I think that there's a lot of little neat details in here that should be talked about. So I'm going to talk about optional for a moment. So here we have the cppreference.com standard optional page. And there's just a few things that I want to call your attention to. The first thing is that standard optional is never going to do a dynamic allocation on its own. So what do I mean by saying that it's never going to do a dynamic allocation on its own? And that is, it is constructed to be at least big enough to hold the thing that you want it to hold. So if I have an optional of int, and it is just here what it is being nothing, this is default initialized to empty, then the size of this i, as you can see, it is 8, so it is the size of a 32-bit integer plus 4 bytes, basically. So it's just going to be the size of the thing plus enough to hold whatever it needs to hold to be able to keep track of whether or not the value is set inside of it. So you know that if you're using optionals in your code and you are sensitive to dynamic allocations that you can use this safely. And you can see that if I were to do something like this, d equals 3.4, there's no dy dynamic allocations happening. And we're on GCC, which doesn't do dynamic uh, heap elision optimizations. So we can be doubly sure that it's really not doing any dynamic allocations of any kind. But what optional does is it is optionally set to a value, it keeps track of whether or not that value is set, and then it appropriately calls the destructor if it needs to. And that is really good, helpful thing for if you have something that maybe is expensive to construct and you're trying to avoid the heap, this would be a good way to hold on to one of those. But where things get interesting to me is in the little details that it has. So let's put this back to being an optional of int and we're just going to change the name here. Now if we were to return O, we are going to, let's do the value, then it has generated all kinds of code for us because basically it knows that we're going to throw an exception. We're going to throw a bad optional access exception because we have not set this value equal to anything. But we can set it equal to something and the compiler should be able to optimize around that. It knows that we've set it. It's able to return the value 3. Now if we still don't have this value set, there's an interesting little function called value or on it and we can say value or two and if it has a value then it'll return the value if it doesn't have a value then it'll return the value two so if we give it a value now it'll return 13 from main instead so value or is neat that can keep your code a lot cleaner depending on what kind of operations you're doing with your optional the other thing is thinking about the way it manages lifetime here we have a trivial type here with our integer, but just to prove a point, if we do O equals 12 here, and now if we do O equals 14, it is going to actually, the first time this is called, on line 6, it is assigning the unset value of the optional to 12 as an integer. Then the second time we call as an assignment, on line 7, it is actually calling the assignment operator on the integer. So in the case of an integer, this isn't really a big deal, but in the case of something more expensive, like perhaps a string, it can have interesting implications. And it is significantly less able to optimize around this now. We're going to up the optimization level to 3 just to see what happens. 
but we're still generating lots and lots of code. And that is effectively because here on line 8 we are generating an assignment from a const car star to the string. We are not doing a new assignment of the optional, we're doing an assignment of the thing that the optional contains. So also interestingly related to that is if we were to do this on line 7, this is a move assignment of the value inside the optional. Now what do you do if you have a type that cannot be moved or copied, which you can create a type like this. So now we have something that is default constructible but cannot be moved or copied. And this is simply to illustrate a point in that moves and copies both incur some cost. Generally speaking, they are not completely free. So what do you do if you want to avoid that cost? Or more to the point, perhaps, if you can't take the cost of using a move or a copy. So we're going to try to assign this optional, this S, and we're going to get a build error because there is no move or copy available to us. And if we were to comment those lines out, now we can see that we get the move or the copy. So optional has an answer to this, and it is the same as any of the other containers. You can kind of, in a way, almost think of it as, uh, well, no, I can't think of a good analogy, actually. But we can do an in-place construction, and it will construct our new object S in place inside the optional, avoiding any cost of move or copy at all. So there you have it. That's a basic introduction to optional. And I think it has a place in the world of C++17. It is unfortunately not constexpr at all, really. Um, so if you're hoping to use it in constexpr context, you can't right now. That comes down to a little bit of a limitation because you cannot do placement new in a const expert context, although there's probably some ways around that. We'll see if the solution comes up to it in time for C20. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.